guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dana, nice to meet you, nice to see you, nice to see you again. This channel is all about SMS Beauty, which is skincare, makeup, sunscreen. We're doing all three today, which this is one of my favorite videos. I don't know, I hope you guys feel the same way. I did get some comments that people liked it, so I'm doing another. This is my no regrets, no regrets, um, things I've changed my mind on. I find these types of videos to be super helpful and I hope you do too because you know us youtubers and people that review things it's not like well first of all there are our opinions what we talk about there are experiences our skin is different than yours our thoughts are different than yours so sometimes we change our mind and that's okay because you know maybe I used a certain product in the winter time when my skin was really dry and now I'm using it well in the summer when it's not dry but you know what I mean things change so so you get the point and let's jump into the video and talk about the products that I have regrets or no regrets on <laughs> yes and I do know it's not spelled regrets that's a joke <laughs> okay this is gonna be random no order at all the first one I have is the tower 28 sunny days broad spectrum SPF so I have a review a video on this I think it's just a dedicated video I will link it above I didn't dislike it but I really made the point to say like this is makeup this is not sunscreen if you put on a quarter of a teaspoon which is the amount that you should be putting on you're gonna have like pretty full coverage like this stuff is not sheer <laughs> and I stand by that I think that is hundred percent still true I've just started using it more as makeup so it's not really that I changed my mind I just changed like how it's categorized in my mind. I don't put this in my sunscreen area. I put it with my tinted moisturizers and I use it as such. So that means I put on a layer of sunscreen underneath it and this is bonus. I think that's how they should have marketed it because it's really, it's not, or it's a tinted moisturizer with sunscreen. So that's a little frustrating, but that said, it's actually a really beautiful tinted moisturizer. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at my tinted moisturizers and I'm like stealing myself up to do that video. I don't have many that I'm like, ugh, they're terrible. But this is, it's really nice and you can get more full coverage, in my opinion, than some of my others. So I use it more. The other one we'll stick on the makeup train is the Say Sun Visor. So interesting story. I had this back last year, 2021 maybe, and I did like it and I, I reviewed it. I thought that the tone was a little interesting. Like it's like a deeper kind of like cooler tone, which is, I, I don't know, like, not that that shouldn't exist, like all the tones and all the shades should exist, but it was just a, a like an interesting choice, I guess. And it's very dewy, like it's just oils and butters and you know, it's like the clean beauty, glowy skin look, which is fine. I can't really use it as much in the summer unless I know I'm gonna be in like heavy AC, but I have come to really appreciate it for just that day when you do want like a really glowy sunscreen look. It's not a lot of fuss. I also have been mixing it with the Say Slip Tint because I looked online and they are like the same formula, <laughs> same SPF, same all of that. So this is really like, this could be a sunscreen. And I, I got like a little bit of a lighter shade. That way it kind of counteracts the deepness of this. And I also have the new Say uh, sun visor on its way, which has vitamin C and like a different, I think, um, kind of tone and color to it. So of course I'm gonna be reviewing all three of them at some point, but again, I've just changed my mind. I've come to appreciate it for what it is. And I think with a lot of products, that's what it is. Like you have to appreciate it for what it is. Like if it doesn't work for you that moment, it might work for you at a different moment. So that's how I kind of view things. And I think it's a mindset that we can, a lot of us would be better off in. Okay, this one I've not talked about and I still, I have like a, a little note up there to do a Naturium review because this brand, I have almost all of their products and it's just, I, I don't know, I haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> this is the Half Step Flash Facial. So this is supposed to be a step that you use in between after you've cleansed like a cleansing balm or oil but before you do any other cleanser, which I guess, I guess you could do that. You could probably do it at any stage. Like you could wash your face fully and then use it. But this is a glycolic and lactic acid, kind of like leave on mask. You put it on, leave it on for up to five minutes. You're doing this pretty much in the shower. I guess I could do it by the sink, but I leave it in the shower. It's strong. 
Like if you want a mask that really works, this stuff is intense. I have found, I don't know why, but the area around my nose gets very sensitive. So if I forget and put it there, the next day it'll be peeling and red and like just kind of burning and not pleasant. So it's not that I had like a, I guess I liked it for a long time and I've used pretty much the whole thing, but it's not that my opinion has changed for the worse. I just think it's like, it's a pretty intense product. So if you have very sensitive skin, I would probably caution you against it. Otherwise, I think it's fabulous and this is one of their better products that like truly does stuff. Okay, I have, I'm realizing I have a lot of sunscreens in this review. <laughs> so two that I will also be reviewing kind of in conjunction are the Super Goop Daily Doses. So we have the vitamin C and then we have the Hy Hydra Ceramide Boost. This one has a dropper. It's supposed to be, well, it is an oil. It's supposed to be like to moisturize and help with dry skin. This one is supposed to be vitamin C. Obviously you're gonna get glowier skin, that kind of um, radiance with it. I did reviews on both of them. I will link them and put them above. The problem with Supergoop for me is that these products don't work well if you put the recommended amount. I mean, they work, they work fine. This one, you will be like radiating glowing, which if that's what you want and like, that's great. It, it does exactly what it's supposed to. And then this one can be quite tacky and you can use it up pretty quickly. This is my second bottle. I, what I have decided and what I've been doing and the reason that I have kind of like reintroduced them to my routine is that I don't use them as the full amount. I don't put a quarter of a teaspoon, especially this one. I've been using more vitamin C. I will do a few pumps, put it on. I think of it like my vitamin C and then I use a sunscreen. And this could do the same thing. I just don't really use oil in the morning in the summer. It's just not, not gonna happen here in North Carolina. But in the winter, I think I'll get a little bit more use out of this when it's drier out. And you can use it as just your sunscreen, but I feel like I've kind of come around to it by using it almost as skincare and then still using a sunscreen. And that then I like them, then I really like them. So it's just a change of mindset, that's all it is. Okay, and the last sunscreen, because this is a lot of sunscreens, is the Supergoop Glow Screen. So, I just did a video comparing the new one and the, the new shade and this one, and I've learned to love this one more. With both of these, the daily doses, I really think of them as skincare, and I've started thinking of the Glow Screen as more like makeup. I can use it as an all-over glow, which I did today, that's what I'm wearing with some concealer, or I can use it as like to highlight parts or with the new one to use as bronzer. I just don't use them 100%. So I put a base of something else on and then I use this or vice versa, I use this first and then put sunscreen. And I found that that, I just enjoy it more. So I don't love that. <laughs> and that is one of my like complaints with Supergoop, but you know, I like to make things work. So when I use it that way with both of them, they work better. Okay, what else? I've got a few more products, not a ton. Let's move into the makeup realm. So the first one I have is the Merit Mascara. This is a mascara that I reviewed when I did the whole like big 22 mascara, tubing mascara one. And this one, it was kind of one of my least favorites. And just like everything else that we were talking about today, my mindset changed. It's not that the product changed. It's not that I was using it wrong. I just used it expecting something else and that's not what it was meant for. This, like Merit kind of is, is a very minimalist everyday mascara and it does a beautiful job of being that. You don't go to this if you're wanting like volume for days or even definition. You go to this if you just want to have something on your lashes but not a lot. And I love that. I love that it's so perfect for every day. It's really good if you're just kind of like bopping around town and you don't want a lot. I still stand by my, my statement that it's not really a tubing mascara. When it comes off, it comes off in like little bits, not like actual tubes. Like if you've seen the Thrive, that's the best example. Or, I mean, there are plenty of other tubing mascaras, but that it comes off, like you can feel it coming off. It's just so rewarding. This one kind of like, just like, it's like, and it like dissipates kind of weirdly. So. I don't go to this because of how it's removed. I don't even like consider it a tubing mascara. It doesn't give you raccoon eyes, which is nice. 
I go to it because it is just the perfect, very light everyday one. It reminds me a lot of the Glossier Lash Slick, but this one, I feel like because of the bristle or the wand, it's a like normal kind of bristly wand like this. I feel like it gives you a little bit more fluttery light lashes, whereas the Glossier Lash Slick, it's a plastic wand, wand, I can't talk, and it can be a little like more definitive. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to say. It can give you a bit more definition and like each lash kind of is um, coated with mascara. This one just gives you these like very natural, flowy, fluttery lashes. So I love it so much. Okay, two more products. Um, let's go to an expensive one. This is the Chanel Le Beige um, Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. And this one, I have a like problem with Chanel. I love their products. <laughs> This is a bronzing cream, you've probably seen it. It now comes in two shades. I think this is still the lighter shade. I don't remember it. This just says Soleil Tan Bronze. I'm not a big bronzer girl, just because I do have kind of like a deeper skin tone already. And I can kind of get a bronze look with either sunscreen or tinted moisturizer. So I don't often use bronzer, even though I have way too many. But this, I love. You can use it with actually the Merit brush or the much cheaper e.l.f. putty brush and they both work really nicely but kind of like a more dense brush like this where you can kind of like dab it like that. It's just so perfect and I think a lot of the Makeup by Mario bronzers probably could do the same thing. They don't give you just this swatch of color which you don't really want because then you have to blend it out. But if you just kind of dab it around the perimeter of your face you get a glow and like this look, this bronze, it's pretty warm, I, I was going to say. It is a little warm of a shade, but it's it's light and it's minimal that it's not going to be so hard to blend out. And I find that if you do just put a little bit on and like blend it, it kind of takes that the sting away from being quite warm. Now, if you have a very light skin tone, it might still be too warm for you, but it's just, it's so minimal and beautiful. It still has pigment, but it's just so easy. I think some people might actually be annoyed because it feels like you're not getting the, the buildup, the pigment buildup as quickly as you might want. But I actually prefer that. That way I don't have like a line on the top of my face. <laughs> okay, and the last two, which are one product. This is an interesting choice that's got cat hair all over it. Story of my life. These are the Glossier um, Cloud Paints. So Cloud Paint, are, I've never said anything bad about it, but I've just never really talked about them, even though I think I have every shade. The reason that they're in this video is because, you guys, you're sleeping on them if you're forgetting about the cloud paint. <laughs> they're just wonderful blushes. They have a ton of shades now, not a ton, but more shades than they used to, so you can find light shades to deeper t shades that should work on every skin tone. And they're really the OG of kind of liquid slash cream blushes. I think if you have them in your collection, it's something to consider pulling back out. They're super easy to work with. My only complaint, and the reason I didn't and still don't always reach for them, is I don't love the delivery method. It's cute. It's like a little paint canister, but it means that you have to put it, you have to put it like on your hand or on a palette or somewhere because it's a little harder to just dab it right onto your face. Whereas some of these other products like I'm looking at this pot and then even like the Rare Beauty. You can access it more easily. These, you have to put it somewhere before you put it on your face. And I think if Glossier kind of, what they did with their bronzer one, they put a doe foot. If they put a doe foot in these, I mean, they would sell out immediately. I think that's what they need to be able to just access it more easily. But they're beautiful. They're freaking beautiful. They're very light. They may not last all day, but they have shades that can be mixed. You can just like make these combinations of colors and they're light, but they still have pigment. Like they're just a dream. I really love them. If I'm going to be wearing like a long, if, or if I need a blush all day, that's not what I'm going to reach for, but you know, it doesn't have to check all the boxes. So that's it. I'm happy. I talked about these products that Really, none of them were like things I hated. Maybe the super groups, <laughs> but I guess it's more like a mindset change. So I encourage you, if you have products that like you just aren't getting the use out of, or you know, I don't know, it like doesn't fit into your routine, just consider thinking of different ways to use it. I mean, you might just want to pass it on to a friend or whatever, but that's how I've been lately. And I've been really trying to think outside of my own little head box. 
and it's been pretty successful. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.